All right, we're recording. And uh, today, let me share my screen, unlike I always forget to. Today, we that's are. Us. That's us. And now it's not us. <laughs> today, we are looking at an introduction to trigonometry. We are starting a long, gruesome, no, not gruesome, a long but worthwhile and um, inquisitive journey um, in trigonometry. We have two whole units on trigonometry, an introduction to trigonometry, some of the basics of trigonometry, and then some more advanced trigonometric uh, subjects. And usually we put the log unit right in between them, but this year we're going to do them all together. Um, but yeah, we're starting a journey uh, like, like Frodo and Samwise Gamgee. All right. So um, to get started on this journey, we need to do trigonometry and we want to do trigonometry using the superior way to measure an angle. If you go into your calculator, and you know, I'm talking here, so my, in the corner you'll see my, uh, my face. If you go into your calculator, if it ever turns on, there it turned on. Look, it's validating. Okay. And you go to mode, you'll see that there's two options, radian and degree. I have to down two. I'm flashing on radian and degree. There's two ways to measure an angle. There's actually a third one. Um, I forget what it's called. It has to do with 100. I think it's called centigrade. 100 um, units in one circle. Uh, degrees, there's 360 units in a circle. We'll talk about how many radians are in a circle in a second. Um, but there's different ways to measure angles. And um, I think radians are the superior one. So what is a radian? Mrs. Contreras. Well, a radian is, uh, well, it's looking, it's a number, and it's looking at the ratio of a uh, radius and the, like, outside. Like, how many, how many radiuses you can put on the outside of a circle or a circumference? Try to draw a good circle. There's a so line you, or a circle, circle pool. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're right. I can totally make a superior circle. You know, every year I have a circle drawn contest, <laughs> and uh, I have technology this year. Uh, what? Well, oh, you did it. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. I probably should use a straight line tool as well. Oh. All right, but you said something as uh, it's the ratio. So a radian, the ratio, not ration, ration, ration. between um, what and uh, and the radius, the circumference. Now, I don't want to say circumference necessarily. Mm, okay. Because that would be one angle, but a ra uh, like one a radian. One radian. So um, the way we calculate radians is by looking at the ratio between an arc and the radius of its circle. But you said another thing, and it was. If you take the radius, let me make a little bit of a better radius. If you take a radius, and then what did you say to do with that radius? I was thinking maybe like wrapping it, like imagine that it's kind of like hugging the, the edge of the circle. The idea of wrapping is gonna come back in a second. But let's take that radius and let's make a perpendicular to the um, x-axis and then slowly wrap it onto the circle the distance that that radian traverses and the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, that is one radian. That's one radian. Um, how many radians are going to be in the full circle? Uh, well, I think it probably has to do something with our uh, one of our irrational numbers. It's either going to be e or pi. Which one do you think, Mr. Kerr? I think it's going to be pi because pi is the number that is the is the ratio between the the diameter of a circle and its circumference. So wait, so one, two, these are all the same. There's like a little bit more. A little bit more would get us there. We go a little bit more. I'm actually doing a pretty darn good job drawing these. I'm impressed. Maybe these last two weren't that good. But there, it looks like there's 
one, two, three, four, five, six, roughly six radii on the circumference of the circle. And then we get to this little extra bit. And I think there's going to be about 0 0.28 repeating, not repeating, oh, yeah. but 0 0.28 ish. Seems like it. Yeah. All right. How are we getting this number? What is the circumference of a circle? Um, pi D or two pi R. Two pi R, pi D. And in this case, our diameter is two, right? Our diameter is two because we're declaring that it's two. Yes. Well, we're declaring that. Well, let's go ahead and say that this circle is a unit radius. circle, radius one. So diameter is one plus one, which is two, two pi. Right. So 6.28 um, with, with some change. So a radian, um, a circle has two pi radians in it. One radian is the angle that, um, if you take the radius and we, we wrap it onto the circle, the angle that it makes with the, um, with the origin. How many degrees is one radian? And just to be clear, this is the only time we're going to talk about degrees, like for the next unit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, once we have established what a radian is, degrees are lame. I told you, radians right. are the best. I'm going to try to justify why, but how many degrees are one radian? Just to, like to, to get a good idea of what a radian actually is. How many degrees are one radian? Well, that's actually kind of hard to think about, just like one. But maybe if we think about the whole circle, so 360 degrees, is going to be the same as uh, two pi radians. Mm -hmm. So we could half everything. So 180 degrees is one pi radians. But now we just have pi, and that's kind of annoying to handle. So, well, what we can we do? Like, like this is an equation, right? That's true. That's true. Let's just like divide by pi on both sides. That's fair. Wait, one radian is. 180 divided by pi. And it's like, I believe it's 57. Slightly, 57, slightly Ish. less than 60. 180 so divided by pi, 57.295. 57, I'm going to go ahead and say 57.3. And that kind of looks like 57 degrees, right? Yeah. Looks great. Yeah. So, so one radian is 57 degrees, okay. On this circle with radius one, could you give me some sort of way to figure out what this angle is? Let me give myself a new color. This angle right here. What is this angle? I don't know what it is, but I'm going to tell you that this is, let's go with 2.5 units. Sweet. What is its radian measure? Well, if we know that the arc is going to be 2.5 units, our radius is one unit, then we can multiply by 180 over pi to get like a degree measurement or like okay so let's get a degree measurement so I i've told you i've told you that this this arc is 2.5 units i haven't told you how many radians it is. i haven't told you what this angle's radian measure is hmm. this is the this is the beauty of radians i think on a unit circle 2.5 units. That means we have 2.5 radiuses. Right? And that is what a radian is? How many radiuses we have? How many, we have 2.5 radius. The, the length of the arc on the unit circle is its radian measure. This, this blue angle here is 2.5 radians. The cool thing about a radian is it is the number that I give you, if we're working on a unit circle. If this radius was 2 and this length was 2.5, we'd have to do some division. 
the a radian is the ratio between the arc length and the radius of the circle. In this case, on a unit circle, if my arc length is 2.5, that is the angle measure. What are the units of ra uh, radians? Well, it's just uh, it's a number. Like there's no. You take an arc length, unit. which is measured in like, for it's all seems... intents and purposes, centimeters in. Okay. Or you, yeah. And then if the arc length is measured in centimeters, the radius is also measured in centimeters. Dimensional analysis, these cancel out. You just get a number. Radians are a number. Radians are a way to measure an angle that utilize the geometry of the circle. Something very pure. 360 degrees, I don't really know the history of that number. I think it has something to do with the Earth's rotation around the sun being like close to 360. It's also a nice number because it's highly composite. One goes into it, two goes into it, three goes into it, four, five, six, seven doesn't, but eight goes into it, nine goes into it, 10 goes into it. Almost all of these single digit numbers go into 360. It's highly composite, um, but it's kind of arbitrary. In fact, we have another unit for measuring angles that uses 100 instead of 360. Let's just get rid of units and use a, use a unitless measurement, a ratio. Regardless of how big your circle is, take the arc length, divide by the radius, and that number is what we're going to call that angle. With that said, this kind of segues us into the introduction of trigonometry. We're going to be doing trigonometry with radians, these pure numbers. So, Mrs. Contreras, what I'd like you to do is consider the unit circle, a circle with radius 1 centered at the origin. Now, consider the line x equals 1, tangent to the circle at 1, 0. Constructed such that every point on the line corresponds to a real number t, that is t units from 1, 0. So, here's 1, 0. This number on this vertical number line, pi over 2, is pi over 2 units away. Okay. Notice that 2 is 1, 2 units away. Pi over 2 is just a number a little bit less than, pi, uh, than 2. Now, take this number line and imagine that it's a string. And then imagine that this thing, I don't have a good, huh, I could, imagine this is a tennis ball. Sometimes in class, I'd have a string and have a, I'd have a tennis ball. Imagine wrapping this string around this circle. Where is the point pi over 2 going to land? I think it's going to land because we were talking about how the, the whole thing is going to be or going, going halfway around the tennis ball is going to get us uh, pi. So this number, maybe yellow is not the best color. Let me go. Let me go back to purple. Purple is purple is pretty sweet. You're telling me that pi is going to land there. Mm -hmm. So my thinking is, well, halfway between what we just drew and where we started is going to be pi over two. These this arc length and this unit length of pi over two on our number line, our vertical number line, are the same length. So if I take this string and I wrap it, that's where the point pi over two is going to land. And I claim that every point on the number line matches to a specific point on the circle. Even if we have like a longer string, because we can wrap it around a couple times, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that every point is going to map to its own point. I'm not saying that this function is one-to-one. -one. I just gave it away. This is a function, right? You give me a number, it's going to land on something, right? It's not going to land on two things. If we think of this as a one-dimensional, a two-dimensional tennis ball, I guess you could like wrap the string in all sorts of ways on a sphere. But we have a circle here. 
That point, Pi over 2 is only going to land on one spot, this point that you claim. 2 is going to land somewhere around here. My previous example on the previous page, 2.5 is going to land somewhere around here. Every point is mapping to a specific point on the circles. Right? We call this a wrapping function. There's other kinds of wrapping functions. We could certainly make a, a, a vertical line and have it wrap onto a triangle. The unit circle being our, I guess our range, is a special wrapping function. One that is often talked about and is the foundation for trigonometry. But we're taking a number line and wrapping it onto a circle. This is the wrapping function. For each real number t on that number line, let w, wrapping, of t map to a specific point x, y. This is a different type of function. We've been dealing a lot with plugging in a number, get out a number. Here we're plugging in a number, getting out a coordinate where x and y is the coordinate pair on the unit circle that that real number gets wrapped to. Right? Understanding this is going to help us better understand the trig functions in their trigonometry um, use rather than their, their, their um, geometry use. Anyways, um, let's do some practice examples. The wrapping function of like, you said pi over two, what did that map to? I mapped to the point uh, zero, 0, 1. 0, 1. Awesome. How about um, you made the claim that uh, if I go high enough on the, the number line, I'm going to make multiple circles. What is, what is 1,001 over 2 pi going to map to? 1,001. That's a little bit annoying. That is super annoying. Uh, what was that? Is that going to wrap around, is that like 500 times? Okay, so yeah, so. Well, be careful. Oh, how no. many, how long, how, how much pi is exhausted in one wrap? Uh, that sounds pi. like a, that sounds like a sandwich question. How much <laughs> pi is in one wrap? In one wrap, because oh, dessert wrap. on our, on our like picture, like, we're thinking that like this two pi, oh wait, can you scroll up a little bit? Yeah. So we're thinking that going all the way up to the top of where our number line is. So that two pi, that's gonna wrap all the way back around to one comma zero, one full rotation. So that means with 1001 over two pi's, we're actually doing what, 500 plus one half pi's? Well, I think we're doing like, we're doing 1001 half pi's that's one half pi. I'm thinking about this too now. I, I've given us a problem that's like requires a lot of brain power. Um, we're doing a thousand and one half pi's. Is that what you said? Uh, yes. All right. So we're going a quarter way around the circle a thousand and one times. Okay. So a thousand times is going to get us back to where we started. Mm-hmm. And then that one more is going to get us up to our, or this one right there. Okay. Whew. It's also zero comma one. <laughs> Wild. I knew it was zero comma one the whole time because I've strategically chosen that one. <laughs> but but what does that tell us about this function? Uh, it's not one to one. Yeah, I kind of said that earlier, but but here's a here's a concrete example of why it's not one to one. What's the domain of this function? The domain is all real numbers because we can wrap around however many times and we'll still get out and output. But how about, sorry? Our range, our output for this function is just going to get us points on our unit circle. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know a good way to describe that notationally. We could think about it for a while, but let's not kill time with that. You can pause and think about it now. Yeah. But um, we haven't addressed something. Where does the point negative pi map to? Well, because we have a number line that also extends in the negative direction. So you're saying that the range or the domain is all real numbers. That means that from the negative direction, we can still wrap our number line around. And it looks like it's going to wrap actually to the same place that pi is. Mm -hmm. Negative pi and pi are mapping to the same spot. Yeah, so the wrapping function of pi and negative pi are 
equal? Is this function even? Is w of t equal to w of negative t? Well, let's think about that because if we have pi over two and negative pi over two, those things, those seem like we can think about them separately. So we have pi over two that maps to zero comma one, which we thought about, but then pi, pi negative pi over two is gonna wrap to zero comma negative one. So no, we do not have an even function. We have, we have a function that is sometimes has this property, but not always. But we said this map to uh, negative one comma zero, nice. Um, we're getting a lot of numbers here. We kind of, so we can deal with negative numbers now. We could deal with positive numbers. We can deal with like very, very large numbers. It's gonna give us something. We, there's different ways we can think about what it's actually mapping to. This is the wrapping, this is the wrapping function. And it's gonna help us construct our understanding of the trig functions. How the heck is it gonna do that? Well, let's go ahead and get common points on the wrapping function. We got some, like pi over two maps to zero comma one. A thousand and one, but what about like pi over six or pi over okay. four? Notice I have some other lines here. We wanna fill this thing out. Right, we're not gonna get every number. There's an infinite amount of them. But we're gonna to try to get the uh, these easy to deal with ones. Pi over six, pi over four, two uh, pi over pi over three. Let's get those. So that's what we're gonna do on this page. Um, let me pause real quick. Are we back? The unit circle. All right, we've already talked about what it is, and what we're doing is we're labeling all the points on the unit circle with the first positive real number, which the wrapping function maps to that point. We want to write that number. Um, so like this would be pi over two. And we wanna write its coordinate as well. This would be zero comma one. We wanna do that for all the points on this picture. Now, before we do, uh, do anything, what kind of circle do we have here? A unit circle. A unit circle, its radius is one. So what is pi over two also? It's not only the number that maps to this point, but but think back to the beginning. Oh, it's the radian. It's the radian. It, it is the angle measure for 90, we're banning the word D-E-G-R-E-E, -E -E, 90 Degrassi's for anyone who like watch, watches that show. I think it's on like Netflix, Degrassi. I watched it when I was a kid. It's many reiterations of it. We have, we have 90 of those things, but we can, instead we're gonna start calling it pi over two. Or that right angle is not pi over two. It's the length of this arc divided by the radius, which is pi over two, because the radius is one. So this is also an angle. A lot of this stuff that we're doing right now kind of seems like out of thin air. Why are we doing it? But it's, it's coming. All right, my question to you, Mrs. Contreras, is what number on the unit circle, sorry, what number on that number line maps to that coordinate right there? Hmm. Well, it's something between zero and pi over two. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, I think we need to use some other, some other things that we know from before to figure out, oh, all the arcs are congruent. I don't think I said that. Lovely. That makes a difference, right? Okay. It does. <laughs> because that means that we have between zero and pi over two is three equal length arcs. And so we just take pi over two divided by three, and we get that point is pi over or that that arc, uh, the angle for that point is going to give us pi over six. Pi over six, cool. Because I really want, I just want us to start with zero. I'm just going to put zero there. Oh, sweet, you beat me to it. Um, our purples are slightly different. They are. <laughs> Anyways, kind of want your purple. It's like probably a little bit easier to see. Anyways. Um, that's pi over six. And then with that said, what what is this and what are the rest? Well, we can, These are all the same. The next one is two pi over six. So two pi over six is going to give us pi over three. And I actually like okay. that idea. Two pi over six. Oh, you got it up there. Let me scroll up. And then we get pi over two. And then we get, what is that? Four pi over six, which is two pi over three. Are we filling in all of these? Yeah, let's just fill them all in. How about you do um, 
You do the top half, I'll do the bottom half. All right, sounds good. Because I'm down here, I'm like, if this is also equal to two pi, so I'm just gonna go backwards. This is two pi, which is uh, 12 pi over six. This is 11 pi over six. This is 10 pi over six or five pi over three. Your pies look better than mine, Mr. Kirk. It's nice. Well, I've been criticized for my pies before. Oh, really? And well, I think I think, I think middle school teachers really care how pie is drawn. You know what I care? I said that wrong. You know how much I care about pies being drawn nicely? Zero pie. That's how much I care. Zero pie. Yeah, so wait, uh, 11, 10, 9, 8 pi over 6, which is 4 pi over 3. And then I'm just going to use your pie. That's uh, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Nice. Sweet. And I, I do appreciate that you wrote 6 pi over 6 there. That's nice. That's helpful. So we have the radian measure of all of these points. We have the point on the number line that maps to those. Those two numbers are the same. Pi over 6 radians, pi over 6 on the number line. Remember that radians are just a number anyway. One could think a radian is the point at which a, uh, the number line maps to. That could be a, a completely new definition of what a radian is. What we also want, though, are the coordinates of each of these points. That's the harder part. Seems more challenging. Yeah, because all we have is that this length is one. Well, that's all that's I mean, been given to us. We can we can plug in, you know, on our on our axes. We know exactly what those are. Yeah, well, um, negative one zero at pi. True, true, true. And then down at your three pi over two, we get. Zero, negative one. Okay. So we, 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 the point at which the wrapping function maps to, uh, pi, pi maps to is negative one, zero, and then zero, negative one for three pi over two. Okay. All right. What about the pi what over else? six? Yeah. What do we, like, there's a segment that's joining the origin with pi over six. Do we know anything about that? Uh, it's length one. It's length one. This is a unit circle. This is a circle. It all points lead to one. All roads lead to Mordor. Is that a saying? Probably not. I think it's like Rome or something. Yeah. But I'm, all roads lead to Rome. I'm just going to use the line tool, and I'm going to join up two points. Oh, you see that? Wait a Does second. that help us at all? I think it. I mean, it doesn't hurt to draw it. I'm also going to add a one here. We have a one there. Um, all of these are ones. Hmm. You know what? Something just popped out to me because you drew that line, though. What? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch it. Um, we now have. I'm gonna try to not uh, overshadow your purple. We now have it's very yellow because this this yellow is very yellow. It's like defeating the the black, which actually kind of surprised me. <laughs> all right, we have a a triangle there. I like to work with triangles because triangles are usually the reason for all math. <laughs> I feel like that's a theorem. Triangles theorem. If triangle, then math. What do we know about this triangle? We have one and one. Ooh, we have one and one. That's a special triangle, right? It's isosceles, at least. Isosceles. Because that means that our opposite angles are also congruent. Opposite angles are congruent? Mm hmm this one and this one? Yeah. Uh, I think it's called like the base angle theorem of, I don't know, something like that. It's Once again, your geometry teacher loved drawing pies correctly, and they also really cared about um, the exact theorem name. We're just chilling here. We're just doing some math. All right. Well, we also know something about that and that. We tried to draw them kind of separate, Ooh. right? So we know that like above our horizontal, that's a pi over six, mm -hmm. and also below our horizontal is pi over six. So then all together, what do we have? Pi over three, right? Pi over three. Okay. Which I, I've been working with radians for a while. I know what pi over three is in that other unit. I'm not going to say the name because we're banning it gone we need to get good at radians radians are superior 
A pi over three is 60 of those other angles, the other angle measure uh, unit. So then we could think about like how, what's the, like what's the total interior angle over triangle measurement? Well, we know that this, this is pi, which mm -hmm. is equivalent to that other thing, 180. That's how many angle, that's how many, uh, that's the angle measure of the interior angles of a triangle. The triangle sum theorem says that the angles add up to 180 Neil deGrasse Tysons. So if we know that pi is got to be these two mysterious orange angles, which we're going to say are two thetas plus a pi over three. Yeah. Then what's one theta? Um, pi minus pi over three is two pi over three. Divided mm -hmm. by two is pi over three. Theta is pi over three. So we have pi over three, and we have pi over three. So then, what do we know about that vertical line that we draw? So, regardless of if the viewer is fluent with radians yet, and the idea is that you're not, I know that whatever pi over three is, the other two angles are also pi over three. This is an equilateral triangle. Now, what would be good is if you know what pi over three is. Pi is equivalent to 180, the things. So 180 divided by three, that's 60. This is a 60, 60, 60 triangle, equilateral triangle. But I'd rather think about it as a pi over three, pi over three, pi over three triangle. This is also the same length. This is good. We, we are making progress here. So we got side length here is one. And so what does that tell us? Um, if I change this part, I change it to blue because I think that might help. Can we conclude that that blue part is half of one? Can we conclude that? I think so. And the reason why is because we had we had established that this was a pi over three because we had pi over six and we had pi over six. The arcs are congruent. Yeah. So we have an angle bisector as our as our x-axis. Mm -hmm. So we can say that the blue part is going to be half of the total purple. I think I'll just add that, like, if these are both pi over 6, pi over 6 and pi over 3, this is itself its own triangle. So that means this needs to be pi over 2. This is a right angle. Ooh. I think that, like, kind of fills out, like, the reasoning here. This is a right angle. These two triangles are congruent. You know what? I don't even think we need this right angle. The, 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 these two triangles are congruent. And if they're congruent, then these two bits must be the same. I, th I think that we can absolutely say that that is one half. Sweet. Oh, so all this geometry has gotten us the y coordinate. <laughs> wow. Nice. But then we can use uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared because we have the right triangle. Oh, Pythagoras. We can use that. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Let's do the little, uh, I think we got some room down here. Right, so we get what, like, uh, one squared equals. Are you writing it? Uh, go ahead. All right, one squared is equal to uh, uh, x squared plus y squared. Mm -hmm. I guess and I could here, write the circle equation. Half. Oh, one there you go. Squared is equal to x squared plus one half squared. Nice parentheses. And it's important. One minus. One fourth. Is it okay if I do that jump there? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, three fourths is equal to x squared. I think we got it. So x is root three over two because yeah, root three root over two. Nice. Square root of four. Uh, plus or minus root three over two, but we're dealing with positive values here. Okay. Down here, it's going to be doing all the same geometry down here. This is going to be negative one half and root three over two. This is just a reflection. Yeah. Want to fill, help, help me fill this thing out? For the rest using, of it? Yeah, we using just symmetry. Use the rotation? Sounds yeah, I think good. so, right? We could do the same thing, but why not? Because I'm down here at 5 pi over 3. 
that's going to have one half as its x and negative root three over two as its y. I want to switch to permit green because there was going to be more colors. What helps me, yeah, what helps me um, know where the one half goes and where the root three goes, plus or minus, is I know one half is smaller than root three over two. One half, root three over two, that's just one has a numerator larger than the other numerator, same denominator. So I'm thinking about these like lengths. This is um, longer than it is tall. So it's going to be a negative root three over two, comma, negative one half. And I, I just like to use whatever writing implement I have to think about which side is longer. Just like I imagine the, that I'm drawing in the, the triangle. You see the triangle with your, with your writing utensil. You use that as your radius. Mm -hmm. And then you fill in the rest of the triangle. And you know which one's longer. And we're dealing with one half and root three is over twos here. We could certainly figure out what all the other um, radian measures and coordinates are for all the other points, the infinite amount of points in the circle. But these are very common angles, as you've experienced so far in like geometry. 30, or better yet, pi over 6. 60, better yet, pi over 3. 90, pi over 2. Um, these are very common angles, so it's useful to, um, to know these ones. So root 3 over 2 and 1 half, those are going to be your best friend. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, so we are moving down. We've dealt with the unit circle um, at increments of pi over six. How about this? Instructions mm -hmm. are the same. All arcs are congruent. And that's really label helpful. the coordinates. Mm -hmm. It's really helpful to know that they're all congruent, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then we need to, what do you say, label? Yeah, let's label. Okay. No, it's okay. Label. Well, tell me, tell me, tell me what's a label. We got, we got zero, comma two pi, mm -hmm. I guess. What does the instruction say? Zero, comma two. First oh, positive no. real number. Let's get rid of that zero. Okay. All right. So we got two pi, but then we have the ones we know, pi over two. Mm -hmm. We have pi. We have three pi over two down here. Yep. Now halfway between. Um, our starting, which is like zero, here's this way. our starting zero and our pi over two, halfway between that, right? That's pi over four, because we know that those arcs are congruent. Oh, pi over four. So yeah, we had the radian measure there. And so then now we can just go through each of them, adding another pi over four. Yeah, so pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four. Nice. So we have the we have the point on the number line that maps to those points. We also have the angle. Cool. What is pi over four in Degrassi's? Uh, <laughs> uh, class of forty five. Four <laughs> class of forty five. Degrassi was a early late nineties early two thousand show, not a nineteen forty show. Something old. Um, okay, so this is a um, this is half a, a right angle, all right. Hey. Oh, that means that this were you about to say the same thing? Yeah. This is a right angle that is Whoa. very useful. Ooh, I see like a lot. Of, I can see the end. It's like you're in a tunnel. You can see the light at the end of the tunnel. This is a <laughs> pi over two angle. What are you thinking now? Well, I'm thinking that we can just drop. We can just drop a drop a thingy thing. Drop a thing, you think? Boom, drops. Because we know a few things about this. Let's call it a purple triangle. Can you make the whole triangle purple for us? Oh, heck yeah. Purple triangle, that is um, a very subtle difference. Only Ravens fans can tell. But now it pops, pop. The um, base and height of this triangle it's is one, right? Yeah. Because those are both radii, radii, radius, radii. Radii, radii. I think we can find that third side. Root two. Root two? Yeah, just one square plus one square. Let's just write it. OK. Oh, because that, that's a line tool. One squared plus one squared is two. So then, yeah. 
right here. And okay. using the same logic, right? We can say that this is a, an angle bisector. Oh, yes. Not an mm -hmm. angle bisector, but a segment bisector. So this is congruent to this. Because we have an angle bisector right there. Mm -hmm. Right, this is pi over two, this is pi over two. They create a line together. Um, these two triangles are congruent, actually. I think it's the best reasoning. So that makes this root two over two. So we got the y coordinate. For some reason, the y coordinate always comes first. What's the x coordinate of this point right here in space? So I want to highlight something. Let's see if this will work. Can I put this one back for it? Let me make it green. Is that triangle? Bam. Nice. Is there anything that we can say about that triangle? Um. Well, we have two of the angles of the triangle, so we can find the third angle. This is pi over two right here. Mm -hmm. This is pi over four. Mm -hmm. Remember, everyone, we're trying to drill that radian angle measure. But if you need to think about it, convert it to turn pi into 180, divide by two, get 90 of those things, 45 of those things, 45, 90. That means this is also a pi over four angle, right? Yeah, I think so. Right, pi minus pi over two minus pi over four is the, the, the what's left over is our final angle, pi over four. So this is also isosceles, right? Isosceles and right. A right isosceles, a triangle. So these two things are the same. So this is also root two over two. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Boom. Nice. And we have symmetry, right? We do. We have symmetry and we just need to do some like sign swaps. Yeah. So like, and we got uh, all the points. Ooh, I was about to do, so we've got positive root two coming negative root two over two down here in the uh, fourth quadrant. I'm going to get some of these. You want to get the top ones? Uh, yeah. Zero coming negative one over here. Negative root two over two coming negative root two over two down here. And then I'll let and you get I, pi. Uh, pi. Pi is what? Oh, look at you being um, sneaky there with your... Uh, so, I think... And this is this is like totally optional, but I think in my brain it helps to think about it as one over root two more okay. than it than it does to think about it as root two over two. All right. And my reasoning for that is because I think one over root two just makes it a little bit more clear about like how some things can cancel out more so to me than root two over two. Well, you have less numbers. If you consider one just like a multiplicative identity, that was a hard word for me to say. That was not, um, that was not lag. That was me saying the word multiplicative. <laughs> um, we could have blamed lag, Mr. Gary. <laughs> I could have, it was lag. What are you talking about? It was lag. Yeah. It was lag. Um, no, I hear what you're saying. Root two over two, there's so many twos there. I always do. I always write it in the um, rationalized denominator form. That's how my brain has been trained. But but either works. Recognize, students, that these are the same. Well, they're opposites. Let me let me take this uh, this idea. Um, one over root two is equal to root two over two. So however you want to write it, write it however you want, right? And also, when we when we get to our um, our more like fancy trig things in the future, it'll be nice to have one over root two rather than something else, because then we have to reciprocate all <laughs> things. All right. So, a uh, student asked, um, "What does the reciprocator? Oh no, no. What does the denominator wear? Uh, denominator wear the wrestler? What's their outfit look like? That because is we know the reciprocator is a, a pirate." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really know. That's a know. that's a tough that's a tough question. The the only thing I could think of was that the denominator does not wear capes because Edna Mode says that capes are not allowed. Capes Although are not allowed. I am currently wearing something something akin to a cape. <laughs> that's because your your place is cold though, right? That's true. <laughs> and so all we know we have the the elusive denominator, the claimed wrestler. 
All we know is they don't wear capes. Um, if you spot the denominator, let us know what they're wearing. All right, so last thing we're gonna do in this video, um, this is getting long, so we're gonna cut this video a little bit. We'll, we'll we're gonna it. wrap it up. That was, that was that was good. That was good. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. We got a unit circle here. This is the uh, the famed unit circle. Anyone who goes through pre-calc um, has seen this thing, has loved it, has hated it, um, and all of the above. Everyone's had every emotion for the unit circle. Let's fill it out. Let's. You want to do the top top half? I do the bottom half. Sure. Let's fill this thing out. And I encourage everyone, while we fill it out, to draw a circle. Uh, give yourself some axes, then draw a circle. Give yourself these um increments and then fill it out yourself All right, it's really it's really useful i don't want to say important because you can always re-derive these values but it's useful to know these these values in your head so um i uh, usually in brick and mortar school i have a competition to see who can draw it faster than me so if anyone wants to, to challenge me um let me know we can have a uh, we can have a race All right, anyways let me go ahead and get this thing i do not want to be challenged um, I, because everyone will just win and I'm totally fine with that. So just know right now you would beat me if we race. That is not my priority. Oh, it's a lie. I have like techniques to doing it fast. Like, uh, uh I can't give away my secrets. Mary Kate says, and my, my producer over here says, don't give away the secrets. Mm. Although I, I've been beaten before, and it was because I forgot these four values. Oh, wow. Oh, so it wasn't that you, like, weren't as fast. It was that you forgot to fill it out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm, I think about the values. Right? I got root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and 1 half. And I'm thinking about what's large and what's small. And Mrs. Contreras, how do you do it? I just hold up my pen and think about it of like which side is longer. I think we talked about it earlier. Because picturing it in my mind is slightly more difficult. Some of us are visual learners, some of us are not. That is just how it rolls. I feel like we need cool background music for this part. I'm like pretending there's music right now. I'm like hyper focused, so I can't like hum. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, ba, da, da, da. He's singing like a uh... chariots of fire. Yeah, yes, chariots of fire. That's the best picture. You know, I had a goal a couple summers ago to watch every best picture ever, all like ninety of them. I think there's been ninety one, maybe ninety two. Um, Academy Awards. Um, what trends did you notice? Um, a lot of the movies start with the end and then go back to the beginning and then make their way to the end. For example, Gandhi does this. It shows Gandhi dying at the end, at the beginning of the movie and then it and then it shows his life leading up to that moment. A lot of the movies start with the end and then show something leading up to that. Forrest Gump is another example. Forrest Gump was the best, best picture. We're talking about the Academy Awards, everyone, by the way. Oscars. Um, Oscars so white. Like, like Forrest Gump starts when, he, uh, when he's sitting on the bench, with the box of chocolates, and then it, then it shows his whole life. A lot of the movies do that. Um, and those are just two examples. There's tons more. Um, there is a unit circle completely done, collaboratively. Excellent. Any Simpsons fans? Excellent. All right, there you have it, though. That is the unit circle. That is, oh, I wanted to zoom out, so I need to make the number smaller. That is a unit circle. And we are going to, in the next video, connect this to trigonometry. All right, we're actually going to do it in this video, but we don't want to torture you guys with like an hour and a half video. So we'll do that in the next video. Your job is to really understand the unit circle, what these numbers mean. There's so many ways to think about these numbers. Um, what do those numbers mean? Mrs. Contreras, what is one thing that like pi over six is? 
Well, pi over six is a radian measurement of how far, how many radiuses around is that angle. Yeah, so like this length right here on the unit circle is pi over six radiuses. Like it's also like because the radius is one, mm -hmm. in, in our specific example, another meaning of the number pi over six is it's the literal length of that arc. It's not just the how many radiuses that there are because we're conveniently using that number one. What else is that pi over six? That pi over six gives us a, a height of root three over two, or sorry, a, a height of one half. Um, I guess a distance from the x-axis of one half? An elevation. Mm -hmm. And then it gives us a distance from the y-axis of root three over two? Mm -hmm. It's like also shadow, the... Mm -hmm. I guess you could think about it. Like if you had a thing here and it was, and this the light was directly overhead. Yeah. It's like how far away the shadow is from the thing. Trigonometry is going to be useful when we start to think about vectors. Notice that Mrs. Uh, Contreras drew an arrow there. Trigonometry is going to be useful with vectors. Trigonometry is going to now be in everything that we do. It will be in our bones. The pi over 6 is also a way to describe this angle span. Because now we can use radians to describe angles rather than just, you know, this arbitrary thing, that, that little circle that we no longer are going to name. We're doing math with radians now. No longer that other thing. Should we call it like a, like, you know what? Or a, I mean, like I'm going to call it Degrassi's or Neil deGrasse Tyson's. Anything okay. with the D-E-G in the name? Can oh. you think of anything else? No, but I'm just thinking Harry Potter. Like, it's the, it's like the Voldemort. Yeah, you like can't oh. say it. You just said it. Oh, no. I now, I, ha the I have been known to slip up and to say the D word, but I, I just have to say that I am exempt from the law. I am. If I make a mistake, yeah. If you say the word, you must do a unit circle. Do a unit, like draw one. You must you must draw an axis, draw a circle, and then label all of you must you must recreate this picture on the screen if you say the word. And I'm not talking to you, Mrs. Contreras. I'm talking to all of the students. Otherwise, I, the reciprocator will come oh, and reciprocate you. And the denominator will denominate. Um, I usually keep a stack of blank unit circles in class, and if someone says it, I throw it at them. I say, "Do this. You can't speak until you've done it." Wow. I can't really do that digitally. I guess I could like write a program that like spams their computer with emails until they do it. Mm. I'm not gonna do that. I'd probably get in trouble. Um, yeah, let's close this one out. Cool. Words of wisdom. Blankets are nice. Blankets are nice. And you know what? Everyone needs a break every now and then. I guess watching this video, the break has already happened. We hope that you enjoyed your winter break. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready?